in a whole of security challenges. Unfortunately, it does not look like we can expect any drastic or immediate changes on the horizon. Therefore, it is the Asia Pacific that will be the place to watch for geopolitical changes in 2016. Territorial disputes are often mentioned as having a potential to trigger conflicts between China and its neighbors. The situation in the South China Sea has caused some littoral states to be concerned, including from across the Pacific, the United States. Indeed, some observers often argue that China is no longer maintaining its decades-long Tao Guang Yang Hui approach, meaning not to show off one's capability but to keep a low profile. And it has adopted a more assertive foreign policy, supported by its behavior in recent territorial disputes. So is China likely to resort to force over territory, as many have argued? According to Taylor Prefraville of MIT, the short answer is that Beijing has always exhibited a preference for peaceful resolving territorial disputes through negotiations. In fact, since 1949, China negotiated compromises in 17 out of 23 territorial disputes, often agreeing to accept less than half of the territory being disputed. In 15 disputes, the compromise created conditions for final territorial settlement through bilateral agreement. Fear that China rise will lead to territorial conflicts are not supported by its historical records. North Korea recently fired its alleged hydrogen bomb, catching everybody off guard. As usual, everybody reacted with rehearsed rhetorics of wanting to do something about it, but nobody seems to know what. In the meantime, Japan amended its constitution and is recognizing and, and, and is reorganizing its defense strategy. It has begun to upgrade its defense regiment and machinery, funded by four consecutive years of increased defense expenditures. Japan's 2016 budget is its largest ever and would place the Japan's defense budget as the seventh largest in the world. The whole exercise has been conducted under the pretext of upholding stability in the region. China, too, has been undergoing its, ma its own major military reorganization for same and similar reasons, but was met with a different treatment by the Western community. In Taiwan just last week, a new leader was elected. It may be too soon to predict if it bears any serious consequences requiring an altering of the temperature across the straits. It will depend on what is to be said and what is to be done. The many, ge many geopolitical security problems in the Asia Pacific will also be further subject to the changing winds of the global e economic situation. The IMF has downgraded prediction for global growth from 3.6 to 3.4 percent and from 2.2 percent to 2.1 percent for OECD countries. WTO has also readjusted global trade growth from 4% down to 3.9%. Economic uncertainty will definitely be another major topic of concern for security in 2016. A major area of concern seems to have been kicked off at the end of 2015 when the Federal Reserve in the United States decided to increase interest rates. Money is expected to be sucked back into the United States which will present further challenges to new and developing economies, many in the Asia-Pacific region, and most of which are already experiencing difficult times. It is very likely that inadequate market fluidity will cause their money to depreciate. China's overall financial stability is of concern not only for all Chinese, but also to pundits who seek to profit from yet another major financial crisis which many have predicted will hit Asia again after 18 years of relative stability? Or will history be repeated that China will be subjected to a similar fate that Japan had with the Plaza Accord? One thing that is noteworthy is that while the Fed is increasing its rates and pulling money in, the central banks in Europe and in Japan have continued to adopt policies of quantitative easing. These actions will further uh, will add further uncertainty and unpredictability to financial markets in 2016. 
Another major area of economic uncertainty pertains to oil prices. In 2015, oil prices jumped off the cliff, largely due to the dwindling demand. OPEC, nevertheless, decided to hold onto its market share and remain adamant about not reducing production. As a result, oil has been at record low prices. 2016 does not promise stability either. To add insult to injury, the United States has lifted the 40 years ban on crude oil exports. And with the lifting of international sanctions, Iran will also return to exporting oil in a big way. This will further increase global oil supply at a time where it remains difficult to see new demands going forward. Goldman Sachs predicts oil may, therefore, drop down to even 20 US dollars per barrel. So in 2016, we will also continue to see increasing competition between new and old energy. In the long term, this will be an increasing area of concern, as it may be destabilizing for traditional oil producing countries, many of whom may already begin to see difficulties with low long-term oil prices. Given all these issues, it is high time that China, the second largest economy, and the United States, the largest economy and the most powerful country in the world, join hands and begin to tackle all these challenges. In 2015, the two countries took the whole world by surprise when they issued this common stance on climate change and reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. We address together a common foe and challenge of the human race. There is no reason why we cannot do this again in 2016 against other predicaments. The individual circumstances of two countries in 2016 are also likely to favor cooperation. 2016 will be an election year for the United States, and it is likely that the Obama administration will not want to end its last year with major problems or confrontations. It will instead be seeking cooperation. In other words, we are unlikely to see an assertive administration or one that will go out of its way to flex its muscle. It's the same outlook for China. 2016 will be the first year of its 13th five-year plan, and China will be busy with its implementation. China has its hands full with domestic issues, urbanization, financial stability, economic restructuring, and cleaning up of the environment just to name a few. It is safe to say that China too will not be looking for deliberate challenges beyond its bounds. Competition in geopolitics between major countries will always exist. Differences will always be there. We hope, however, that 2016 will not be a year where we will see escalating tension and conflict. Nobody wants that. Competition, after all, can be friendly and amicable. Differences can be managed and accommodated. And while we, may be, while we may have different backgrounds and different past, we have a common future to face, a common destiny to share and behold. We live, ladies and gentlemen, in an increasingly interconnected world, which has recognized that cooperation and trust yields better results for all. We can ensure the stability and prosperity of the Sino-US relationship by promoting dialogue, understanding, respect, trust, and cooperation. The importance of this task cannot be understated. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the Sino-US relationship is not only a bilateral relationship, it is a global one, affecting the whole wide world and the entire human race. The challenges this world faces are overwhelming and may not be addressed or solved overnight nor by our two countries alone. We should join forces to rally the whole world to come together for a common cause. This and many other challenges are all the more reason to work hand in hand rather than double guessing, excluding, or one-upping one another. There are no guarantees that China and the United States will transcend the operation of great power rivalry. But as Dr. Kissinger once said, we owe it to ourselves and the world to make an effort to do so. But how are we just about going about doing so? Any suggestions? I'm all years. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And well, that's fine.